Hey everybody, welcome back to Nerd News Today. I'm Matthew, and today we're taking a look at some more Minimates from Diamond Select. And when I say these might be the most fantastic Minimates ever made, it's not really too much of a hyperbole because these are really all about fantasy. Today I'm taking a look at Series 1 of Diamond Select's new Dungeons & Dragons Minimates. And these D&D Minimates here are based on the cartoon series from 1984, not necessarily the actual game, although, you know, there is obviously a lot of crossover between those two things, but we're talking cartoons here. And if there's one thing that translates excellently to the world of Minimates, it's cartoons. And I was so excited to hear about the announcement that they were going to be doing the D&D cartoon because I really wish there was more D&D merchandise out there. Now, of course, Hasbro is doing their own things with the actual D&D game and making action figures of the movie. But as far as like the cartoon, we've gotten some statues, I believe, from I think it was Pop Culture Shock who did them and they were pretty darn expensive. And Hasbro, speaking of, most recently did do action figures in the six inch scale of these characters, but they were kind of hit or miss from what I saw. A lot of folks weren't too happy about them and I've yet to also get them based on a lot of those reactions. But with a line like the Minimates and with a series like Dungeons and Dragons, I know that these two things combined will make for one very cool collectible. So let's go ahead and jump into things here. And first things first, we gotta talk about this packaging here because this is some really, really unique box art here. So Minimates these days are always gonna be in multi-packs, which is what we have here. This is six figures in one box here. Here. And what they try and do now is make them a little more exciting to look at. So for example, with Power Rangers recently, they did it in like a VHS or a DVD style. We've seen them do that with Transformers and Ninja Turtles Minimates also. So in the case of D&D, they decided to go for this sort of book motif here. So you can see like this is the front of the book, this is the back, and on the sides here, we have the pages of the book, which are really nice. They're kind of like this gold leaf trim here. And then for this other side here, it's kind of like the spine of a book. So really cool, unique way to package these figures and also kind of tie it into the lore of D&D. So front of the box is basically very similar to like a Dungeons & Dragons module book also, which is a very nice additional touch there. We've got to look at all the characters here from the show in Minimates form, which is a lot of fun. And on the back of the packaging here, we have the six characters that we're seeing in this wave, which is going to be Hank the Ranger, Eric the Cavalier, Diana the Acrobat, Presto the Magician, Sheila the Thief, and Bobby the Barbarian with Uni the Unicorn. And also very exciting is right below that, they let us know who's going to be in the second wave of these Minimates, and that's going to be, for the most part, the bad guys at one exception. So we're getting the Dungeon Master, we're getting Dekion the Skeleton Warrior, because you got to have a classic skeleton if you're playing D&D. We got Nightmare the Dark Horse, who's going to go perfectly with War Duke the Fighter, aka one of the best figures of all time, period. We've got a Shadow Demon, and then rounding off the crew, we've got Venger the Sorcerer and the main baddie in the D&D cartoon. Now, I might be hallucinating to this, I don't quite know here, but I could have sworn I saw a Tiamat Minimate as well. So chances are this might not be complete here. We might be getting more than two ways, or we might maybe get a special pack at some point with Tiamat. Don't quote me on that, but I could have sworn I saw one. So if you guys recall seeing that too, let me know in the comments below. But for now, let's at least just do the grand unveiling because the nice thing about the Minimates now is they're also very, very collector friendly. Case in point here, this box, it's got some Velcro latches. And when we open that up, we get this grand reveal here, of what the inside of this box is gonna look like. And it's a pretty epic reveal. It's very fitting for a D&D. So what you're getting here with this two part package is on the left side, we're getting some more flavor text here, which tells you the bio about what the D&D cartoon is all about, as well as a little bit more information about our characters, or in this case, our heroes, and the different accessories that they come with, because yes, each one of them does come with their signature weapon. And meanwhile, on the opposite side, we get a look at all the figures and all of their different accessories. And that's a lot of stuff here. It's a lot packed into all these characters here. And everybody really does have their main iconic accessory to go with them. And in the case of Presto, it looks like he gets two. And of course, I'm very excited to see Uni as part of this set because if we didn't get Uni, well, frankly, we'd all riot. Or maybe I should say Frank Wilkerly, we would riot. But you guys know what I'm saying. But initial glance, everything is looking really cool from the packaging to the design to the way the toys are all set up in there, and even the story behind it. So I think it's time for us to go ahead and roll initiative, get these guys out of the box, and take a closer look at our Dungeons & Dragons Minimates from all angles. And between me and you, I'm hoping these things roll a nat 20, but that's to be determined. So let's go ahead now and unbox this set, and let the story begin. All right, we got our D&D Minimates out of the box. Let's do a quick roll call, starting with Hank the Ranger over here on the left. We now go over to Diana the Acrobat who I always felt was the second in command, and I'll fight anybody who says that she wasn't, because she might as well have just been the leader herself, too. Uh, following that is Eric, the Cavalier. Then we have Sheila, the Thief, in her purple outfit, which is really the least likely thing to ever wear if you're a thief. We've got Presto, the Magician, minus his hat, but we'll get back to that a little bit later on. 
And lastly, rounding out the team, we have Bobby the Barbarian with Uni the Unicorn. So we have all six of our heroes right here, and they look amazing to me. You know, this is exactly what I was hoping to get with these figures, and they're pulling it off and then some because, man, these look so good. <laughs> you know, there was a lot of criticism when Hasbro released their six-inch scale versions of all these characters because there was a lot of quality control issues with them. And uh, I can definitely say to you guys that you're not going to see the same issues here at all because uh, they're completely different toys. But not only that, yeah, they, they are just very different top to bottom. So let's go ahead and jump on into things here, and uh, you guys can already see them for yourself. The likenesses are great. If you're not used to Minimates, it might be a little bit weird at first to get used to them, but yeah, they're basically highly cartoonized versions of all these characters, and they're kind of like a better version of a Funko Pop, but with articulation. And when I say that, I mean, like you can see here, the faces are kind of featureless for the most part. It's really about the eyes and the mouths usually, and the eyebrows, uh, and beyond that, you know, the expressions, whatever that's on their face. So yeah, they have that. Um, but then they also have really cool, you know, clothing, great accessories, really wonderful articulation as well. And uh, in fact, let me just show you guys the back of a few of these as well, which generally aren't as exciting as the front, but they're not bad. You know, uh, there's capes plenty over here. So yeah, just so you can see from every angle, these things are really colorful. They're well put together, well sculpted, and all pretty unique amongst each other. So yeah, they're, they're really nice. And another fun thing about Minimates, by the way, if you don't know, is that they're all interchangeable. So every single piece you see here easily can pop out and be put on somebody else. So, for example, if you want to take Diana's hair, you can go ahead and do that and put it onto Eric's head instead. And now Eric can finally be pretty. Or look like Richard Simmons, whatever, it's up to you. But yeah, everything comes out. Like, so if you want to pop the heads off, you can. You could swap capes around. Uh, every single piece comes off. If you want to give Hank's armor to somebody else, you can do that. So as you already saw, the hairs come out as well. And, uh, and sometimes they have alternate heads in the back of them. Now, unfortunately, this wave looks like they don't. So that's a little bit of a disappointment. I kind of wish there was, but not all the lines do that. They don't always do it either. It's kind of a special treat when they do. But yeah, that's kind of just a basic idea of how these mini mates operate. And you can see for yourself again, like they've really just captured the look and feel of the cartoons with this very simple style. And that part... I really appreciate. Outfits as well are on point, I'd say top to bottom. You know, there's a lot of little details in there, but Minimates always capture it. You know, they don't cheap out. And every time you see a Minimate, keep in mind too, they're, they're not like really recycling molds. I mean, for the most part, what you'll see is like the same body across the board. I mean, because these are all, are all fairly unisex bodies. What'll change is like the clothing pieces and that kind of thing. And they're always uniquely tooled. You're not gonna really get the same figure twice. So I really commend Diamond for doing something like that because that's rare in this day and age of toys. Now I want to start going into accessories here, because that's actually a very important part of what Minimates are all about here. And yes, I'm counting Uni as a Minimate, but I'm just going to go clop this accessory over here. So everybody comes with, and you can already see them on everybody else's figures here, they all come with bases. And I haven't put Bobbies on yet, so here's just what the base looks like. This little round guy here with a single peg hull, and their feet can pretty much take any of these pegs wherever you want to put them. So we just pop it into there, attaches very easily. And now our Barbarian is on his stand. So everybody's got a stand now. And for the most part, you really don't need these stands. Uh, they're wonderful to have because they are great and they keep them steady when they have accessories and things like that. But, you know, if I wasn't even using the stands, they'd all be standing up perfectly straight. So don't get me wrong, they're amazing to have and they're highly useful. And I, I always use the bases with them, but if you're worried about them standing up without them, then yeah, you'll be fine. But seriously, use the base. You'll get better dynamic poses with them. So yeah, that's just wonderful to have included here. So that's a look at the figures themselves overall, and I think they're wonderful looking toys. Let's talk about one of the most important parts of Minimates next though, and that would be the accessories. And man, do they have a lot of accessories. Let's start with Hank, who comes with two accessories actually. We've got ourselves a bow and an arrow. And this arrow is made of some transparent plastic, so it's got a little more of an energy kind of look to it, just like what I've had in the cartoon show. So you can see uh, that he's gonna be able to easily hold this in his hand, which is, Amazing. You know, how many toys can actually do that? With a bow especially, I mean, I don't even know if his Hasbro could do that as well, because there's tons of problems with the wrist joints, but don't get me started on that. Um, and so there is, in fact, a little holster for the arrow here as well. So, all right, let's see if we can do this. And I will say, the one downside of Hank looks like, um, you know, he can definitely pose with it, but if you want to get him to actually pull the arrow, that's going to be a little bit more difficult just because of his giant body armor. So if that wasn't there, it wouldn't be an issue, but uh, yes, he does at the very least come with his bow and arrow, and that part is great, and it looks really good. So, yeah, you guys can at home can definitely play with it yourself uh, on how to try and find a way for him to hold it differently, but uh, the fact is it's in his hand, and it still looks really great, so I'll take it as it is. 
Diana has her Javelin staff, which you can see right here. Again, similar to what Hank had. This is a transparent piece of plastic. It's basically a bow staff. You know, that's really kind of all it is here. But uh, it is the more or less exact color you would have seen her use in the cartoon. And uh, the, the articulation here does, in fact, allow her to hold it. Um, these figures are a little stiff out of the box, typically. That's just kind of normal for a mini-mate. But eventually you get them warmed up a little bit and they start moving with no problems and they should be able to hold all their accessories with equally no issues. So there you go, you can see Diana now holding her staff. Looks very good, real good color too. It does actually pop really nicely, uh, even the way this is right here. So that's how Diana's gonna look with her javelin staff in hand. Really excellent. And Diana's also a great example of the articulation too. I'm just gonna pop this out again, just to show you guys a little more about it. But the heads are ball jointed, it can move around really nicely. Put her hair back on for the rest of this. Shoulders are ball jointed. Elbow has a single joint, wrists can bend and flex. Her waist can move around as well. Great knee joints, ankles can move, and legs can also kick as needed. So very good articulation with Minimates too. You'll never ever have problems with that. They're always really great. And again, a part of that too is because they are interchangeable. And when I say interchangeable too, I don't just mean with each other, but I mean with really any other Minimate you have. So, you know, in the past we've looked at uh, Power Rangers Minimates, we've looked at AEW Minimates most recently. And yeah, this and all other mini can interchange their pieces with no issues, so you can have a lot of customization fun with no boiling parts, nothing like that, just pop them in and play. Eric the Cavalier with his very bright yellow outfit to match his cowardly antics. Also has his great bright red cape with him too, uh, but his accessory is his shield, his griffin shield, which again, we could just slide into his hand, which I know, I know I'm completely covering it on camera. It's, this toy is really tiny, it's hard to not do, this, do it this way. But there you go, eventually off camera I can do this and my hands won't cover it as much, but yeah, there you go, you have his griffin shield as well, which has a little handle, that's how he's holding it over there. But again, just great, looks exactly the way that it should, straight out of the cartoon series. So that's our Cavalier and his shield. Let's see who's next. So here is Sheila. Uh, again, she's the thief uh, with interesting choice of colors for being a thief. You know, bright red hair and a bright purple outfit. Yeah, you know, when you're sneaking around, this is definitely what you want to wear. But uh, speaking of wearing stuff, really none of that matters because this here is in fact a cloak of invisibility. And that is what her accessory is, which is an actual cloak of invisibility. So it's made with some transparent plastic. And we're gonna do this right now. Let's go ahead and swap some parts out. So I'm gonna take her head off, her hair off, we'll get her cape off. Uh, her foot came off too for some reason, but that just happens. Uh, here we go. We get her back on the base and just like that, she's now wearing the cloak of invisibility that's actually invisible and see-through, like it would have been in the show. Uh, of course, we can still easily see her here. You know, this isn't like some amazing green screen technology, but fact is she has a cloak of invisibility and it actually can work. And uh, you can easily get her in the pose where it kind of looks like she's pulling the cloak over her head and making herself invisible. So that's pretty cool. <laughs> that's a little great piece of detailing right there. So that's how our shield is gonna look while she's invisible. Now, Presto the Magician, you might have noticed earlier, was missing something and that would be his wizardly hat. Well, not entirely because it's actually a separate piece. Uh, and it's not like you know, a separate piece you attach onto the hair, it actually is his hair. So the way this would work would be, I'd pop it out like this and we'd put his new hair piece on, and there we go. Now he actually has his wizarding cap the way it's meant to be. But what if he actually wants to use it? Well, good thing is he actually can. So we'll go ahead, put his capless hair back on, and then over here we have his wizard's cap with magic coming right out of it. And you could have him holding it pretty easily, almost like it's a bouquet of flowers actually. You have him hold it like this and it's magic time. So there you go. He actually does in fact hold it. That's really cool. And there is your magic in action. And finally, Bobby, as well as Uni. Here's a better look at Uni as well. These are the two smallest characters in this lineup here. But don't worry, Bobby also gets an accessory. And he comes with his equally tiny but very powerful menacing club for his barbarian status class. So uh, let's go ahead and put that in his hand as well. And again, the hair and the helmet, it is one piece. So if you want to take it off, you're taking off the hair with it. He can hold the club and that's how it looks. And again, also just so you guys can get a better look at Uni. Uni is very cute. Uh, it's a perfect size in scale with everybody else. Not articulated, but that's fine. And really it's got all the details that matter. So that's our Uni, that's our Bobby, that's our whole team. That's everything that they come with. And let's get one last look at the entire lineup now that they're all ready for combat. So the truth of the matter is if you're looking to replace your Hasbro D&D figures, 
this is completely different. It's a very different thing. I mean, these guys are obviously not in scale through six inch figures at all. But if you're looking for something that's a D&D collectible that is not gonna give you the same issues, like the quality control issues we saw with those Hasbro figures, something that's a little bit smaller and I'd say definitely more affordable, these Dungeons & Dragons Mini Mates are the way to go. Now keep in mind, this is a pack of all six figures here, plus Uni, sold as one. So you're not gonna have to hunt down any more figures. All your heroes are right here all together. And as I mentioned at the start of the video, the villains are coming soon. And hey, there might be more. I don't know for a fact, but I get the feeling there might be one or two more we haven't seen yet. So it's a pretty big line. You're going to get all your main characters. You're going to get War Duke coming up next. So yeah, for me, this is definitely a line that is worth getting. They look great together. You know, whether you're a mini mint collector like I am, or you're someone who just likes D&D, &D, I think this is a great way to go. And you know, that said too, especially if you're a D&D &D collector, the fun thing about this is that these are pretty small. So if you wanted to use these in a campaign to represent some characters, you probably could. You could probably get away with that. So that's just my two cents on that. But hey, if you want to give your two cents, and well, frankly, a little bit more than that, to pick up these mini mates for yourself, I'm gonna have some links to places you can buy them in the description for this video below. If you click on any of those links, they help support this YouTube channel at no extra cost to you. So until next time, that's our look at the Dungeons and Dragons Mini Mates Series 1 from Diamond Select. Until next time, I'm Matthew. This has been Nerd News Today. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you guys here next time with more figure reviews, statue unboxings, and everything else we do here on this channel.